Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Wednesday, December 29th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about this tool and how it can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Before I get started, I just want to personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering here later in the week. So if you're liking what you see as I go through the video and you want to learn more about this tool and how it can be used to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link right down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, then somewhere right there on the web page, there's going to be an area for you to click to get signed up. So like I said, if you're liking what you see and you want to learn more about this tool, then definitely get signed up for the free class. First off, a couple of clarification points. First off, if I, this, if you're new, then each one of these candlesticks does represent 30 minutes worth of time. So uh, I get it. This may look like several days worth of time, but it's actually just today broken down into 30 minute time slices. And then next, the market is still open for a little while. So you're not crazy. That candlestick right there is still going to be moving. And when you watch this video, the chart's going to look a little different for you. Uh, but I like to do the video, these videos when the market's still open, because sometimes we can capture some really interesting uh, price action live. Uh, but the levels that I do talk about, they are still going to completely be relevant as we head into Wednesday. So just, well, like I said, want to make those couple of clarification points. But the first one here, ticker symbol CPOP. And you can see very nice day to day, not only from a volume perspective, uh, but the price reacted very nicely with it. And now we have a couple of very well-defined levels moving forward. And I like well-defined levels. I like levels that a lot of people are watching because when lots of people are watching them, that means, you know, you can call it a self-fulfilling prophecy. You can call it whatever you want, but it can produce some very dynamic movements. And the level here that I think a lot of people have noticed and have done is this right here. They've drawn that trend line right there and they're going to be wondering, all right, can the price break through that trend line? So while nothing is guaranteed, my core point here is it's a more than plausible thought to have that if the price can recover back up here and then get a break up through that trend line, that that break right there could very well create additional buying pressure just because, well, hey, it's a breakout. I'm a breakout player. I'm supposed to be buying right now. So keep an eye on that level. And if it can get back up to that area, and like I said, that could definitely present a very interesting momentum, you know, breakout perspective for people that like to play breakouts or excuse me, a pullbacks. You have a very well-defined area down there at 205. You can see that earlier on in the day, the price got down there several times. And every single time the price got down around there, uh, people showed up on the bid at right around 205. And, you know, the bears can never press out any further than that. So as far as, you know, main overarching technical levels uh, that are, you know, a lot of people will be observing. You have that trend line up there as a resistance point. You have the 205 support level down there. So it'll be interesting to see how this thing plays out over the next couple of days. Next one, ISIG. And again, another nice technical pattern here with levels that uh, I think stand out quite a bit. So they're well-defined. A lot of people will be watching them. And the well-defined level here that I personally think a whole lot of people are going to be watching right up there at $22.50. So from the breakout standpoint, again, no guarantees, but is it valid? Is it plausible to think that if the price works its way up to there and then can get the break up through there, that that break could create additional buying pressure and causing people to buy, well, just because they're a breakout player. Absolutely. So keep a close eye on 2250 from a resistance side of things. As far as areas of support are concerned, what I'm curious about is this tread line here that is forming. Let me change that to green to represent more so a bullish dynamic, an area of support. So keep an eye on that. And then just from uh, to make this a more of a pattern. So we have again, the resistance there. We have the support there. We have the you know big momentum move right there. If we put our little golf hole down there for you, boys, you're the more visual. This would be known as a bull pennant pattern. So bull pennant here on ISIG, and this one has proven many times in the past, including today, that it can still move and, and move very quickly. Uh, so again, if it can come up there and get the break up through that area, then that break could very re realistically you know cause that much more momentum to pour in. So worth at least keeping on the watch list. Next one here, AMC, and this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched the videos previously, but in the previous video talked about that purple line there, the 50 period moving average as that main area of resistance and a very cruel move today uh, because the price did break up through that moving average and actually started to, to act like it wanted to run, run, run. And then just like that completely rolled back over. So a very devastating, a very cruel move because those people that were buying the breakout, I mean, that was a valid thought process. And to be fair, if they were scalpers, I mean, there was enough room in there to maybe scalp out a profit. But for people that were thinking this thing was going to get that much more momentum, yeah, a, a, a nasty move back to the downside. But on the bright side, it wasn't completely nasty where the price, you know, broke out, then came all the way down there to that green line, and then even broke down through there. That would have been a very, very nasty, nasty move. So like I said, it was bad, sure, but it wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. So a point here being moving forward, that $27 mark still remains a very important level of support, and at least the price remains above it. And then as far as levels of resistance, well, that purple line 
still remains a key level. And you can see that it's gone right back to acting as resistance after the price fell back below it. Tried to get back above it there, but uh, got rejected by it once again. Um, so now that purple line currently valid, let's just call it $28.50. So keep an eye on that from the resistance side of things. Uh, but overall, like I said, yeah, it was bad today, but it certainly could have been worse. So at least the price is still hanging above 27 Next one here, R-E-L-I, and overall, you know, and this is a little confusing, or I shouldn't say confusing, it's a little difficult to talk about from the presentation standpoint, because there are several perspectives that go into it. First off, if you're a day trader, flipper, scalper, and you bought right there, or maybe, you know, you bought right there trying to buy a pullback, and your plan was to buy and sell within, you know, 10 minutes, well then, yeah, from that angle, the chart's looking pretty bad, because it just kept on pulling back. However, if you care about things from the big picture point of view, everything is still perfectly fine. I mean, you look at the lows today, which are right there at $5.65. And then you, you know, so you had those lows right there and you compare them with those lows and then these lows down here and then those lows down there. And if you envision each of those as stair steps, well, from the big picture, you still very clearly have stair steps progressing the upward direction. So even with the pullback today, everything is still perfectly fine. Again, I understand if you're a day trader and you bought right there, then yeah, you, you would disagree with that statement. But that's why I'm trying to differentiate that I'm talking about things and those people that care about a bigger picture point of view. So the pullback was, was annoying. Yeah, not the most pleasant thing, uh, but like I said, it's still chipping away and building higher bases, uh, and that's what matters most from uh, you know a trend building standpoint. If the price does try to recover back upwards, key area gonna be right there at the $7 mark as that main area of resistance. So overall, not a great day today, but multiple days, the trend still continues up. Next one here, AAPL, and wanna talk about Apple just because it is once again flirting with these highs right here, which again, not some sort of great discovery on my part. I assure you a lot of people have noticed that right around this 182 mark is certainly a very important level. You can see right there, resisted the price right there. Price got up around it, resisted the price. And then even today got in within that general vicinity and resisted the price. So while nothing is guaranteed, and I know I've said that a couple of times, but I'm going to continue to say it because I really want to drive this home. There, there's no holy grail. There's no perfect system, but from a, you know, forming plausible, logical thought processes, absolutely valid to think that if the price can get up to 182, and then push up through there, that that break could very well create additional upside buying pressure, especially it's Apple, right? Everybody's heard of Apple. So you gotta think that people around the world are watching that 182 mark and wondering about it. So keep an eye on that. As far as support levels are concerned, watch out purple line there, the 50 period moving average, uh, currently valid at 177, uh, we'll call it 35. Uh, but overall, as long as the price does maintain above that purple line, then the overall health of this current trend is still perfectly fine. But it, in, in my opinion, at least, the main dynamic here that most people are, care about is gonna be that 182 mark. Next one here, ticker symbol FTK, and another nice move uh, in regards to the volume and price movement, but now we have, going back to the theme of well-defined areas, and I think a lot of people have drawn a tread line, maybe not exactly like that one, but generally speaking in the, you know, the general vicinity up here, a tread line right there. So from a self-fulfilling prophecy breakout point of view, got to think that if the price can get up to right around the 91 cent mark and break through it, that could create quite a bit of upside buying pressure. So to me, that's going to be a very important tread line to watch. As far as levels of support are concerned, Key pullback point seems to be right there at the 80 cent mark. And then just to get the overall pattern drawn up. So again, we have the resistance there. We have the support there. We have the momentum move right there. Let's get our hole down there. And this would be another bull pennant pattern. So if you like to play this price range of down below a dollar, you like to play these sorts of patterns, then I definitely get this one on your watch list. Next one, F-A-M-I. And this one is very straightforward. Uh, you know, it's really just a matter of, okay, this volume was very impressive. That price movement there was very impressive. So is this a start of something bigger or was this just a, a, a just a little miniature, you know, surge of momentum that doesn't have any sort of genuine power behind it? And right now it's seeming, yeah, maybe not because you can see volume has just completely dried up and the price has just slowly been bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. But it's not like the price has totally collapsed and gone all the way back to where it started. Had it done that, well, that's a situation where, okay, it's looking like it's not the start of anything bigger because the price has gone right back to where it was. So it still hasn't gone right back to where it was. But the idea is, you know, maybe this volar volume is just a little bit of a breath before more momentum comes in. So if you like to play these where you're trying to kind of get a jump on the gun, look for leaning indicators. Well, then we have a great leaning indicator here with the volume surge and then the price momentum upwards. So it's at least worth maybe even if you keep towards the bottom of the watch list, just wondering, all right, you know, is this the start of something bigger? Maybe it's not, but if it is, well, then at least you know you'll have an eye on it. Next one here, ticker symbol FCEL. And this one is interesting. It would be more interesting if I had the scales. There we go. But you can see that the price is right down here around previous areas of support at $5.90. Now, granted, the price did actually drop below it a little bit here. But you can see, point here being that it's gotten down below this previous area here where the price has bounced several times. And it's now started to go sideways. So does that mean it's going to you know, bounce back upwards? Uh, of course not. But is it at least valid to think that it could bounce? Yeah, I mean, it's happened not once, but it's happened twice. 
So again, does that mean that it's going to happen a third time? Again, no. But is it plausible? Is it valid to think that way? It absolutely is. In case in point, if the price had never bounced off 590 and I was sitting here saying, oh, it's looking like it could bounce, you could be, you'd be totally justified to say, well, Clay, based on what? I mean, it's never done it before, but in this situation, it has two times before. So will it happen a third time? That's going to be the big question mark moving forward. So let's see if FCL can once again repeat history and get a bounce from this 590 area. Next one here, PIXY, and hopefully this becomes pretty clear on why this one will be making the watch list. Big surge late day today, a volume price reacted nicely with it, and now it's just going to be a question of can this momentum continue, and we have a very well-defined continuation point, and you know what I'm going to say next when I after I use the words well-defined. So we have a good self-fulfilling prophecy point right up there at $1.25. Nothing fancy behind that at all, other than the fact that that's just where the price and momentum has been rejected several times here. So keep an eye on that as the key breakout point. As far as pullback areas are concerned, main area to watch from that regard, right down there at the 98 cent mark, you can see earlier on, two times in a row, the, the bears try to press down through that area, but it held strong. So that's really what, it, in my opinion, it boils down to. You have two well-defined areas, and the question mark just becomes, well, who is ultimately going to win out? Are the bulls going to win out by getting a break to the upside, or are the bears going to win with a breakout to the downside? That's the big question mark. Uh, but, you know, as far as, you know, I don't know, are there any well-defined areas? I mean, I don't think you can really argue into that. Uh, you know, two areas, so worth at least keeping an eye on, and we'll see uh, if this volume can remain strong, and then if there can be any sort of worthwhile self-fulfilling prophecies in really either direction. Next one here, TSLA Tesla, and this will mean a bit more to those of you that watched the previous video, uh, but I talked about these two areas, and both areas still 100% relevant, especially this level up here around 11.15, in fact, during that opening 30 minutes. Surprise, surprise, the power of charts. Price got right up to that red line and then get, did get rejected back down. So we have yet another data point, which means there's just going to be that many more people watching and paying attention to that 11.15 mark. So you're going to have that much more of a potential of a self-fulfilling prophecy, especially like Apple. It's Tesla, right? Most people have heard of Tesla. So keep an eye on 11.80, or excuse me, 11.15 as that main breakout point. As far as supports are concerned, still have the level down here at the 1070 mark got somewhat close to it today but i mean that's good that the price didn't even go down and hit that bottom area but regardless that doesn't change the fact that 1070 is going to be that main area of support moving forward uh, so like the one we just looked at pixy you have now two well-defined levels and it's just a question of who is ultimately going to win out if you're you know forced to guess you, you got to go with the bulls right because i mean this is all occurring in an uptrend so that doesn't guarantee that it's going to you know continue on up but i mean you want to you know go with the trend and in that you know uh, you know regard then yeah you got to think that the bulls have have a good chance of getting up to 1115 and potentially pushing up through it uh, but you got to love those well-defined self-fulfilling prophecy points and tesla definitely have his one at 1115. so that wraps up the top 10 again if you like what you saw here and you want to take your understanding of the tool of technical analysis to another level so that you can begin to use this tool to build consistency as a trader then definitely get signed up for the class it'll be late later this week like i said earlier thursday december 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern, so definitely get signed up for the free class. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, then please communicate that to me by doing two easy things. Hit that like button, leave a simple comment. Say hi, let me know a stock that you traded today. Give me a smiley face emoji, but those two things, hitting the like button, leaving a simple comment, communicate to me that you enjoy these videos. And as long as I know that people are enjoying, then I will continue to put in the time and effort uh, to put these watch lists together. And again, if you wanna learn more about charts, to build consistency as traders, then definitely get signed up for the free class. Everybody take care. Have a good one.